What's up guys, this is Joe and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 2, Leon B and we're picking things up here in episode 5 and we're going to start by getting items that I need to get because I keep forgetting where they were. To be honest, even in like a draft of this episode, I had forgotten where to go for an item. So that's what we're going to be starting things off here so I can get that damn last plug that keeps giving me a problem and we can proceed with the story through the sewers. Alright, so now the first item on the checklist that I'm going to have to get, I cannot believe I forgot where this one was, is a little thing called... The Unicorn Medal. If you guys don't recognize that from the Claire A scenario, I had originally gotten it out of the Star's office when I checked Chris's diary. I went ahead and checked it again here in practice when it wasn't there, so I was wondering where could it be. And then I just remembered, if you guys remember from that Let's Play, I had said something about there being like a hollow impression in the wall, like a circular you know, spot, spot in the wall on the second floor balcony. And I was like, oh, why would that be there? You know, why would they just leave a... A empty circle here that you could put something into well there you go that answers the question because that's where the unicorn metal is they actually put it in there and I cannot believe I forgot that that was there but that's where it is so that's what I'm gonna get and we need that metal so that I can go ahead and put it into the that statue on the first floor so that I can get the spade key and that'll be the last key and we'll be done with the keys and then we can move on to getting that last plug and I believe that the little spot in the wall where the unicorn metal is is right over here. I didn't even think to come down here yet. It's right here. You can even see it in there. I cannot believe I forgot that. All right, so now we've got that, and I can use the ladder that I lowered to get down to the first floor so that I can put it in the statue. I'm so happy that I did that. I suggest that for anybody playing the game, make sure you lower that statue as soon as possible, and you can hear a liquor, like, walking around ready to get me. Let me try to... Oh, they... Apparently... I thought he was going to jump. Shot him down. There we go. I always get nervous when they, like, are getting ready to jump at you because usually... They can just take your head off. I know I've said that before, but I've had a lot of experiences where I've had to replay hours of the game because I've died to a liquor. So let's go ahead and go down the ladder here. And I know, like, sometimes liquors only take two shots, and sometimes they take three. I really wish it was just two because it would save a lot more shells. As you can see, I've only got one shell, a whopping one shell in my gun. Right, that's not good at all. So like I said last episode, definitely going to try to, you know, work with the item, conserving items. All right. So here we go, got the old fountain, all that stuff, we already read this. You just have to put the unicorn metal in place, and the statue will move forward, hit that little platform there, and the spade key will drop right out of that vase or something that she's holding. And yes, now we have the spade key. A spade key that can open a, open a whopping one door in this entire police station. Can you believe that? It, that? This room is so special, you can see it there to the left on the map here, that they devoted one, in making one key to open it. It's like the one ring in Lord of the Rings, the one key to open this door. It's ridiculous. I hope there's something decent behind it. If not, I'm going to be pretty upset, especially since I had forgotten where it was and it you know, gave me trouble last episode. But hopefully there's something good. I think it's actually... Now uh, the door we need to open is actually in this hallway right here, and I'm happy there's no liquors in here either, because if you guys remember, this is where we found the first liquor in the Claire A scenario, he dropped from the ceiling. See, discard, useless, is literally is used for one door, it's ridiculous. Uh, but happy there's no liquors there, because I only have one shell, and the pistol really isn't that great against liquors. Alright, so now I can go ahead and check this whole area, patrol report. I have already read this in the Claire scenario, I remember. It just basically talks about what they found, and it says they found the C4 plastic explosive, which Claire used to clear all of that, uh, the wreckage of the helicopter that crashed into the police station. You know, the hallway that leads to the chief's office? Yeah, that's what they're talking about. And there we go. I thought the crank would have been up there, but it's a first aid spray, because the crank, speaking of the chief's office, that's where it is. It's actually up there down the hallway into the chief's office. I know I got, I even got like a radio message from Claire saying, oh, Leon, I cleared all the wreckage and I didn't even pay it any, you know, my in thought at all. I just kept playing with the game. Next time, if they tell me anything, like I'm going to run to where they say that way I don't forget. All right, I don't want the ink ribbon. I really wish they left more ammo around here. Like this just constant ink ribbons. I'm not going to run out of ink ribbons, all right? I only, I literally save at the end of every episode. So I only save every like 20 something minutes. I'm not going to run out of ink ribbons. All right, so now we've got the, we've used a spade key, and there you go. You can see that whole area there on the second floor. That's where we're going to have to head to now. That's the chief's office, and I cannot believe I forgot to go there because it's not even highlighted or anything. It's showing that I haven't been there yet, but I guess I didn't think to check the second floor map, so let's go ahead and head up there now. And it's cool. That's another instance of how, you know, Claire cleared all the rubble. It's cool how the two campaigns overlap like that with some effect, some, um, Events in one campaign will affect the other. I really like that about Resident Evil 2. All right, I'm just going to use the trust the old ladder again to get up to the second floor. I believe I just have to go through my save room. And it should take me right to the hallway leading to that crash helicopter. That I already went ahead and killed all of the liquors in. Now I don't have to worry about them. 
and I'm really hoping I find shells soon. I mean, I might have to rely on the handgun. I don't even remember trying to fight liquors with a handgun. Like, I don't even, I've always just used this gun here. I don't even know if the handgun is useful at all. I'm pretty sure it'll take them down, you know, eventually, but they can, they can just keep swiping at your ankles. I think you have a less chance of survival if you're using the handgun, obviously. All right, let me just make sure I've got everything I want. All right, I'll keep these first aid sprays on me. Even though maybe I should have put one in the item box, so I'm not tempted to use it. Because like I said last episode, I want to try to save up on health items because I don't have any. These two, these two first aid sprays you're seeing in the inventory, that's all I've got. I don't have any in the item box or anything, so hopefully I don't use them, you know, stupidly. All right, let's go ahead and head in here. I don't know if the Chief's actually going to be in here or we're going to get a cutscene or not, so let's go ahead and just see. Oh, apparently he's not here. I know when we got in here as Claire, you know, he was sitting here at the desk with the mayor's daughter on the desk here. Well, apparently he, he already ran off. And I believe that little diary in his chair is Chief's Diary. And if it is, I already read it, so I'm not going to read it again. Yep, Chief's Diary. Basically, he is just telling about how he is insane and he wants to trap all of his officers here in the RPD so that he can hunt them down and kill them himself. Yes, the Chief is a sadistic one, definitely. All right, and that's where I place all the stone tablets in the Claire scenario. Don't have to worry about that in Leon scenario because I got the plugs to worry about. And right down this hallway, if you go over here, this is actually it leads to like all the chief's you know taxidermy stuff and his paintings and statues and stuff because he really needs that, right? Yeah. But this is where you find the crank, which has been giving me you know un unseen amounts of trouble so far. But it's right, act it's actually right in here. And I think we might be running into Sherry as well. I don't really remember. I think she might be in the same room where I have to get the crank. So let's go ahead and see. It's right down here. Oh well, apparently nobody is gonna come out in the Leon scenario. Here's the crank. It gets its own golden box. Yeah, it's kind of awesome they put it in that. I don't remember what was in there for the Claire scenario. I think maybe a first aid spray, but I don't know. All right, so let's see. If I There's a light switch over here. I want to see if this does anything. Oh, apparently you can't even do that. And there's also a fireplace. I didn't get to try to light it. I know it says it, didn't, it can't be used. All right, fine. I thought that might have done something, but apparently you can't do it. Couldn't do it last time because I didn't have the lighter on me when I was playing as Claire. Good thing that uh, Leon has the lighter as a uh, stock item. It doesn't even take up an item slot. I don't like that music. And I got an idea of who it is and I don't have enough ammo to try to protect myself from him. Yes, it's Mr. X again. Oh man, I that's kind of good how he reaches back like that and tries to hit you because you ha actually have a chance of evading him. So I'm happy he did that. And yeah, as you can see, he just pops up everywhere. He, like he, like I said last episode, he reminds me of Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. You know, he's kind of like the predecessor to Nemesis. And he's just as scary. I remember playing this game as a kid, and I just didn't feel safe anywhere after he had burst through the room that first time last episode. I was just constantly paranoid of where he was going to come out and everything. So it's kind of cool to see him again. It's been quite a while. And I got a comment recently that was telling me about how you can actually... I guess incapacitate him where he'll just fall and drop some ammo and stuff. It takes a few shotgun, you know, shells, which I don't have, so I had no choice but to run away from him. So that's why I didn't try to do any of that. I'm going to put a first aid spray up, just like I said last time, so I don't use it. And, all right, I think there's everything I need. I got the cog wheel and the crank now, so we can go ahead and head and get that, uh, the last plug. I don't know which one it is. I think it's the rook. I don't remember. It might be the rook or the, or the bishop or something. I don't remember which plugs I got. All I know is I definitely got the king one. I remember that, but I don't know the other one. So we'll head back over here and head to the third floor. And I think I said that last episode, how funny it is that they have, they built an entire third floor of the police station for just one room. There's no, there are no other rooms on the third floor but that one. And I know it's kind of more like an attic, I think I said, but it's just funny because there's an entire balcony and everything up here devoted to the one room. I don't know why they did that. Why couldn't they just put this stuff down in the basement or something? I don't even, I don't know why. I don't even know what all these cogs for are up here. Are they like for a, I don't know, a bell or something? I have no idea. But you see, this whole balcony just for this one door over here. It's pretty hilarious. It's got this innocent little one light right over it and everything. But now that I finally have got the square crank, I can go ahead and use it here. And I don't even know if it's called a square crank in this game. No, it's just called a crank because there's only one of them. In Resident Evil 1, they had the square crank, they had the hexagonal crank. I, I don't know if they had an octagonal crank, I don't remember, but I know there was just more than one, which was kind of annoying because you didn't know, you know, if you needed this one or that one, you just had to go and inspect the holes, and if you had the wrong crank, you had to go all the way back to your item box, so I'm happy that they didn't bring that over here in Resident Evil 2, it's just one crank, you only gotta use it once as far as I know, and that's it. Alright, so here's all the gears, let's go ahead and put the cogwheel in place, and get this thing running. Yes, I want to go ahead and activate the switch, and it should lower this little 
I don't know, metal plate over here. Don't even know what this is. I thought it was a door, but apparently not. And there should be a plug in there. It looks empty. It better have it in here. All right, there we go, the night plug. So it wasn't a bishop or the other one. It was a night plug. An old dust chute. Will you jump down? All right, sure. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I wasn't available in the clear scenario. Might as well try it out. Let's see where it leads to. I'm guessing the basement. Yeah, th where is this? Is this in the... No! Oh, God, what was that? Get, Get away! Oh, great. So, as you guys can see, we are in the hallway leading back to the prison cells where Ben was so, you know, contently waiting. He thought he was safe behind those bars, but as you guys can see, he's not safe at all. He just got attacked by a G-Virus monster. You can tell because of the big eyeball on the arm. And if, I, if I'm correct, I think it's William Birkin. Ben! Can you still hear me? Come on, answer! Damn! I don't believe this. I almost got the story. <coughs> ben. <laughs> Bitter irony. The chief of police, a co-conspirator. Oh, get that scum. Make him pay. Hang in there, Ben. Leon. Alright, we've got a mail to the chief. To Brian Irons, chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. We have lost a mansion lab facility through the actions of the renegade operative Albert Wesker. Fortunately, his interference will have no lasting effects upon our continued virus research. Our only present concern is the presence of the remaining STARS members, Redfield, Valentine, Burton, Chambers, and Vickers. If it comes to light, the STARS have any evidence as to the activities of our research, dispose of them in such a manner that would appear to be purely accidental. Continue to monitor their progress and make certain their knowledge does not go public. Annette will continue to be your contact throughout this affair. William Birkin. Alright, to Mr. Brian Irons, the chief of police again. I have deposited the amount of $10,000 to the account for your services this term as per our agreement. The development of the G-Virus scheduled to replace the T-Virus is near completion. Once completed, I am certain that I will be appointed to be a member of the executive board for Umbrella Incorporated. It is imperative that we proceed with extreme caution. Redfield and the remaining STARS members are still attempting to uncover information on the project, continue to monitor their activities, and block all attempts to investigate the underground research facilities. William Birkin. To Mr. Brian Irons again, we have a problem. I have received information informing me that Umbrella HQ has sent spies to recover my research on the G-Virus. There are an unknown number of agents involved. They must not be allowed to take this project away from me as it represents my entire life's work. Search the city thoroughly for any suspicious persons. Detain any such individuals by whatever means deemed necessary and contact me immediately through a net. With these precautions, any possible threat should be eliminated. I will not allow anyone to steal my work on the G-Virus, not even Umbrella. William Birkin. Alright, we filed the mail to the chief. Where are you going, Ada? To the chemical plant. I have a feeling that's where I'll find John. Ada! Wait! Hey! Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? That is some of the most hilarious dialogue in the game. Because I was just going to say, they should have, for Leon's alternate outfit, they should have just gave him a shirt that said, some, you know, underline wait. Because it seems like he says that for everybody. You wait, you wait. And I'm happy that they actually, you know, acknowledge that by having him say, nobody listens to me. So, and as you can see, Ben is just dead over here. A miserable death. 
Kind of sucks. I mean, he wasn't really that developed of a character, really. I didn't really care about him all too much. But that one line of dialogue where he's like, find that scum and make him pay is just awesome. So at least he's got that to his credit. And Ada, of course, ran off again, doesn't want to wait for Leon. And I'm definitely going to follow Claire's advice this time, because she contacted me by the radio, because I don't want to get lost again. So apparently she's going to leave. And let me see, I think if we go down that manhole in here, it should take me to the... What is it? The room next to the septic pool room. Oh, great. Where I can use all of the plugs. And, yeah, now that I've got all four of them, I can use them on that, like, chessboard-looking panel. And uh, hopefully I can outrun these dogs. There we go. I just It's kind of useful there how they give you the option to select yes or no. Because it just protects you from getting eaten a lot of the, you know, most of the times. Hopefully I don't get bitten by any of these spiders, too. These huge spiders. And I like how they retain their look from Resident Evil 1. You know, it's kind of cool. I thought they would have made them look a little bit different, but I like that they look the same, which is a good thing. All right, now here's the room. It should, yeah, there we go. The septic room should be right over here. So let me go ahead and get the rest of the plugs. And I guess any first aid sprays or ammo that I have stocked, I know it's not much, because I believe we're going to be having a boss fight coming up, and I really hope I don't die, but no promises because... As you can see, ammo is pretty scarce right now, so let's go ahead and get the rest of the plugs in here. And I'm definitely going to be getting out the Magnum and its bullets, because I'm probably going to need it. Let me go ahead and get them. And, oh, I've got two first aid sprays. Let me think about this. Alright, one shell is not going to really do much, so let's go ahead and swap it out for a first aid spray. Because that's just a waste. One shot and the gun's done. It's just a waste of inventory space. Alright, so this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to be relying heavily on the Magnum, because I don't think the pistol's going to be doing that much. You know, good. So let's go ahead and equip the Magnum out of the gate. Definitely going to be using that. And I'm really surprised how early they give you that in the Leon campaign because I don't even know if we got it as clear. Like, it's really, you know, it's one of the more powerful guns in the series. They usually reserve it for the end of the game, so I'm surprised they gave it to me so early. But let's go ahead and head into the room here. I knew it as you can see we have a very angry William Birkin here and now we know where he got that pipe from I thought he was gonna throw it at me but hopefully this Magnum can put him down cuz I'm kind of cornered right now I don't even know how many bullets are in the clip to this thing oh I think he's dead I think he's dead the music stopped is he oh I'm, I'm getting around dang I was able to make it around him I don't know if he's dead or not oh whoa what is he doing that was awesome I mean, he just did he kill himself? He, like, jumped off the side. I thought he was going to fall on the floor. We would have been able to pick up an item off of him, but apparently he just wants to fall off the side. Oh, well. So that definitely means we're going to be seeing him later. Uh, but that went pretty good. That was really quick. I thought I think it only took, what, like, four or five shots? It just goes to show you how strong the Magnum is. So I'm happy I had that, or else it would have been really screwed. All right, so now we've got the chessboard panel here. Let's go ahead and insert all of the plugs and see where this door leads to. So we'll start with a night plug. Oh, and they actually have, like, their own little spots. I thought it was just, you know, just going to light from left to right, the little red square. So that's pretty cool. I guess a little attention to detail there. And we've got the king plug. All right, that's the last one. And the door should open. There you go. Now let's see what's behind it. I don't know if there's a cutscene or anything coming up. Hopefully no more bosses, that's for sure. All right, I recognize this. Ada! What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid. Those zombies are everywhere, not to mention that thing that got Ben. I was there, Leon, I know. Look, Ada, as an officer, it's my job to look out for you. But we're not going to get through this alive if we don't work together, okay? All right, we'll do this your way for now. All right, cool. So now we've got Ada as part of our little, you know, party here. She's going to follow us, kind of like with Sherry and Claire. And I love how Leon, even through all of this craziness, he is still, you know, upholding the law, acting as if he's a police officer, because obviously he still is, but it's just funny how he's, you know, keeping that up, even though all of this craziness is going on around him. He's, you know, telling Ada to follow him like a good citizen because he's supposed to protect her and all this. 
So I always thought that was funny. But let me go ahead and unequip the Magnum. Don't want to waste any of those shots. They're definitely precious because it looks like I'm not going to be getting that much ammo anywhere. And now we are officially in the sewers, it looks like. And we've got some blue herbs there. Not going to pick them up because I don't plan on getting poisoned. You know the same old story. Not going to get poisoned. And I don't even think... Oh, wait. I was going to say I don't think there are any uh, spiders down here. But I just remembered that there are. But hopefully I don't get... You know, they don't spit on me any acid. And it looks like there's a little note here. I think we've read this one in the past. Let me go ahead and put, uh, pick it up anyway. The sewer manager facts. Yeah, I already read this. I can recognize the name Angelica. Uh, what was her name? Margaret? Yeah. It's just basically ta ta uh, talking about Umbrella's activities down here in the sewers. So I already read that in the past. And yeah, it just goes to show how corrupt the whole city was. The chief was corrupt. The sewage manager was corrupt. Like, Umbrella had this whole city basically in their pocket. Do we have an ink ribbon over here? Of course. Of they're so, like I said earlier, they're so, you know giving with the ink ribbons don't need ink ribbons i'll go ahead and equip it now because i'm about to save but come on give me some more ammo please all right so i'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here in the save room classic we've got ada now you know by our side here and yeah we'll be picking things up in episode six where we will be continuing to explore the sewers and hopefully we won't run into william birkin again anytime soon so hope you guys have enjoyed watching this episode and i can't wait to see you back again next time